Hello everyone, I'm Dan with Pro Audio Superstore. In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the Q16 digital mixing console from Allen & Heath. The Q16 is a 22 input, 12 output digital mixing console for both live sound and recording applications. It features 16 mono inputs with mic preamps and line level connections, three stereo inputs with TRS connections, four stereo FX returns, 12 total outputs, and AES digital output. The Q16 also features multi-track recording via USB, wireless iPad mixing, DAW MIDI control, and Allen & Heath's D-Snake port for a single Cat5 connection to either the AR2412 or AR84 stage boxes. Let's dive right in and take a look at how this awesome digital console works. Okay, so let's take a look at the touchscreen interface for the Q16 and the Q24 for that matter. Um, so when you've got a channel selected, in this case channel 1, You've got a, an input section on the touch screen that gives you an idea of where you are. And for every change that you make on the physical controls, you should see it reflected. So if I turn the preamp up or down, you'll see that reflected on the touch screen. From here is where you would, if this is a mic input, which in this case, um, the mic I'm talking through right now is going through channel 16. So. Um, we're showing channel 16. You can see how where my preamp is set. I've got 48, the phantom power, 48 volt phantom power turned on because it's a condenser mic. Uh, again, you can see the gain level. From here, you can uh, reverse the phase if you had to, the polarity, and you can link it in pairs. So, for example, 15 and 16 can be linked together, and this is how you would do that. You would link it. Um, so, moving on, you've got the gate section. And all of your, the majority of your controls for the noise gate and the compressor will be here. Um, the knob itself gives you the threshold for the noise gate. And, of course, you can turn it on and off. You can hear it. As you can see, it's kicking in when I'm talking. Turn it off. From here, whatever particular parameter you need to change, touch the parameter, you'll see it turns yellow. And then this knob here will adjust that parameter. So the same for all of the controls: the hold, attack, release, threshold. You can even you can control the threshold from this or from the threshold knob up in the section. Moving on to the parametric EQ. Now you've got essentially full control over the parametric EQ here. All the parameters that you would need on the parametric can be adjusted here as well as the high pass filter which is also reflected on the touch screen. So if I make changes here you'll see it here. So same principle here, you touch the control that you want, you can adjust it here or on the other knobs for the section. It gives you a nice visual readout too of your frequency spectrum. I'm going to adjust the gain down as you can see it's changing and the compressor section Got a nice visual readout of how much gain reduction you'll be getting. So in this case, let's 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 turn on the compressor and listen to it. So th this is on my speech mic here. So I'm gonna do a pretty fast attack release at 150 milliseconds. That's probably about right. Let's do a four to one, which is pretty much what I use for the most part. We'll do a soft. It's on. We'll do a soft knee. Yeah, we'll do soft knee. And you can just threshold. This is going to be the makeup gain. So let's adjust the threshold a little bit. And you can see if we can get my mic to go into compression. Up, oh, you can see it there. Got some gain reduction showing. And I've got uh, quite a bit of gain reduction, actually. That's pretty low. Th so test one, two, test one, two. You can hear that kicking in. And I want to bring the gain back up to compensate. Test one, two, three. Test one, two. Test one, two, three. Test one, two. Test one, two, three. So there's the compressor. Pretty straightforward. It's got everything you need. Now, as far as the other features from the touchscreen system, this is your processing section. You also have routing where you can set you know, um, 
the mix sends for your auxiliary, your mix outputs, whether they're pre or post, turn them on and off. Um, your FX sends to the, the two FX engines that are in, this, in the console. Um, outside of the routing, there's the home screen, which gives you some basic setup features. Um, this is going to be good for House of Worship, like a House of Worship scenario where you've got volunteers. You can actually set levels of users and how much they can control. Three different levels of basic, standard, and admin, which has complete control. You can have complete meters on the touchscreen. And there's also an RTA that's showing you everything pre fader going through the board in a nice visual readout. Good for if you've got a frequency feeding back or something like that, you need a notch out. You'll be able to see it here. The Q drive is for the Q drive port on the top of the board, right there. And this is where you can set it to record just the stereo out to the Q drive or even the multi track out. And this just needs to be a USB hard drive. Um, it needs to be a powered hard drive, one with its own power supply, as this will not su supply power out to a, a bus powered drive. Um, for multi track recording, it actually needs to be a hard drive. Now, for stereo, or just the stereo output recording, you can connect just a, you know, a USB. Um, you know, flash drive to it. Moving on, you've got the effects engines. This is where you can set the different types of effects. There's two, the, there's two engines and then two more effects uh, outputs, you know, that you can wrap, you know, in and out of the console um, that are dedicated for, for that purpose. But in this case, the, the two engines that are built in are FX1 and FX2. Um, you can hit this function button, which we, right there you can see it says library. So if you hit this button, we're on FX1. This is where you can choose what kind of effect that you want. Let's say I want a reverb on it and a, arena number two. Select that and then we'll hit recall. So now that effects is the, the reverb arena two. Now moving on, the scene recall for the board. When you've got and like, for example, again, in a house of worship where you've got your main band and then auxiliary things and programs that you do where you can set those all up in scenes and instantly recall them here. And it recalls every single parameter on the board. Routing, EQs, fader positions with the moving faders, everything. Very easy, very handy. And, and then you've got your setup menu, which has lots of different setup features. Now let's uh, we'll take a look, take a break, and we'll take a look at the uh, the mixing section. Uh, as you can see here, the the blue light indicates that this is my basically my main channel mix, and there's two layers to the main channel mix. Now this green light here indicates that what you're what you're seeing on the faders is for channels one through sixteen, just straight to the main mix. Now there's a different there's another layer. If you hit the layer button. Notice the blue light comes on here, and now what you're seeing is basically the, the master sends for the various uh, buses and, and mix outputs. So in this case, uh, the, uh, uh, the built-in effects engines, the, the, the true returns for those, as well as the, the two external effects returns, the FX sends, the master sends to the effects engines, and then your master mix outputs for the various auxiliary mixes. So if I go back, so now again we're seeing the, the main mix for the main left and right outputs. Now if I want to set up my monitor mix for my drummer, for example, let's say my drummer is on the um, mix output one, I hit mix one. Now this now, of course, these faders now correspond to the, the mix that I'm going to send him. So he's my drummer. He probably wants a little bit of kick, some snare, and, you know, maybe a bass, a couple of guitars, the lead vocal, you know, keep the accordion out of it for that matter. Um, and now, you know, moving on to my, let's say, my bass player's mix. He's got his own wedge or his own in-ears. Now, by hitting that button, 
faders then change to the sends for his mix, whatever that may be. And the same, same principle all the way up and down. And then going back, the effects, these are, these are the sends for the two built-in effects engines. So if I want some snare going to a reverb, I turn up the snare to that reverb. And you can always come back to your main mix with the left and right button here. And that's it. Very simple. Okay. Now, we're going to um, take some pre-recorded tracks that were recorded at the studio here. Uh, some drum tracks. And we're going to bring them back into the Q16 console um, to just give you an idea of how quick and easy it is to get a mix started and to you know get around the, the different features of the board. So um, this drum mix, there's 10 mics, um, one on the inside of the kick drum, one on the outside, one on the top of the snare, one on the bottom of the snare. Uh, there was three toms, two racks, and one floor, two overheads, and a room mic. So uh, I'm going to, this is all streaming in, back into the console from Logic Pro on the studio computer here, and it's all coming via USB connection on the back of the Q16. And it's a, I've got it on a loop, so it's going to, the, the specific section is going to repeat itself, but we'll start playback here. Now you can already see, we've got audio coming back into the channels here. So we're going to bring up kick drum first. Here's the inside of the kick. Sounds pretty good. A little bit of the outside kick. Give it a nice punch there. And now how about top snare? A little bit of the bottom snare. The floor tom. Now the floor tom, I want to paint. So I'm going to hit the select button for that channel. Now this, the center section here now becomes the controls for that particular channel. So I've got it selected. I'm going to pan it all the way to the left. So I like to pan my drums as if you're looking at them as the drummer's playing. All right, so we're going to bring up the next tom. And I'm going to go ahead and select it as well. Maybe pan it just a little bit over here, a little ways. And the other rack tom, which I'll pan a little bit this way and bring it up. Okay, now next are my overheads. So I'm going to select my left channel overhead, which is by the floor tom. Pan it all the way to the left. Bring it up a little bit. There you can start to hear it there. Alright, so let's take my right overhead, bring it up, oh, yeah, there it is, and now finally my room mic, which I'm just, just a mono room mic, so I'm just going to bring it up, it's right in the center, now in the studio it was heavily compressed to bring that room through, you'll hear it. Here's a basic drum mix. I'm not trying to mix it completely here, but just to give you an idea, you can kind of hear everything. Bring those overheads down a little bit. This rock has come up. Okay, so now let's talk about some processing. So the kick drums sound pretty good. The snare drum, you can select the snare drum, track number three, and I'm going to go ahead and put the hard pass filter on, which you can see here. Set it at about 100, maybe 
take that down to around, around 75 or so. Just to get rid of some of that kick drum out of that mic. Same with the, uh, the bottom snare. I'm going to turn the high pass filter on. And I might even set it a little higher. Good. So moving on to the floor tom. I'm going to high pass it, but it'll be pretty low just to get rid of some of that rumble. Sounds pretty good. X rack tom, kind of the same thing. Select the channel, get the high pass. Good. Other rack tom, probably leave it at 100. Now your overheads, move on to the left one. And we'll go ahead and get the high pass going on that as well. Right around there. Same thing for the other one. And the room mic. On the room mic, a little bit of that kind of mid-range. That was a ribbon mic going into a, a distressor, compressor. So, a little dirty, right around maybe the 300, 400 range, something like that. So let's, we've got the EQs already on, nothing's engaged yet. So I'm adjusting the frequency. You can see we're at about 355 or so. And let me just do a little bit of a cut. It's pretty wide already, so we'll leave it there. Let me sweep it around. There it is, right around 355. No EQ. Got rid of a little bit of that mid-range resonance. Now let's take a look at the toms. There's only basically that one section where they hit. So let's try the noise gate out. Those toms sound great. So we're going to select the, the first tom here, which is the floor tom. Let's move over to the gate section so you can see it. Now you've got all your controls. Now let's engage the gate and turn it on. We want to very fast attack, so you want to touch the where it says attack on your screen, and we're going to turn it down. Hold, we want that tom to ring a little while, and then a pretty slow release to kind of give it a nice fade out. And in this case, I'm going to change the depth too, I don't want to completely kill the signal, Change the depth, so maybe just about 10 dB. Of, well, let's do like 12. Now I'm going to adjust the threshold for the gate. As you can see here, I don't know if you can see it on this, but you've got a little bit of a gain reduction showing right here. We've got this little light too that's showing that you've got some gain reduction. So we should be able to hear the gate here in just a second. Now the gate's still getting triggered by the snare, so I'm going to raise it just a little bit more. Okay. So I'm right just above where that snare is hitting. Let's see if it's 
that's where it needs to be for that floor tom. Yep. Perfect. So if I take the gate out, you can hear that channel come back in. Turn it on, and there goes the left side a little bit, getting rid of some of that. I can even take it down some more if I want. So let's move on to the next tom. So again, same kind of thing here. I want a really fast attack and a slow release. That hold should probably be pretty good. We're going to take the depth. I want to go back to about the same thing, 12 or so. Turn on the gate. Bring. Well, I don't want those snare hits triggering the gate. So I'm right above the snare hits, but I want that tom to come through whenever it hits next. Right now. So I'm not triggering. Nice. For the next time, fast attack, slow release, hold it, depth, bring down to about 12, turn it on, and adjust that gate, make sure that snare's not triggering it, just barely. That first hits that first time. things up a little bit. So there you go. It's as simple as that. Any analog person can, that somebody that's used to an analog console can get on one of these things and, and, and understand it pretty quickly, as you can see. Operates in the same way. Instead of just having a bunch of different controls in a line for each strip or each channel, you just have the select feature for each one. Hit the select, and now you've got all your controls here and on the touch screen. Pretty cool.